<sighs> I have to do it. I, I, I seriously have to do it. No man, it could be good. Yes, I'm aware that Dragon Ball Evolution happened. Alright? But you know what? Edge of Tomorrow was really good. What do you mean it was in an anime? It was a manga? Scarlett Johansson's in it. What do you mean she's underrated? I HATE YOU! Welcome everyone to Sandro Goes Off, the only show on YouTube that can feature a guy talking to a stuffed, cosplaying alpaca. This week we're going to be watching Ghost in the Shell, which is originally a film from 1994, an anime film, rather, in which uh, Motoko Kusanagi is a cop in a futuristic Tokyo, and she's trying to find out why people are getting hacked and committing murders like cyber terrorism. However, this new film takes that plot, kind of expands on it, and gives it its own little, you know, Hollywood taste to it, if you will. So, is Ghost of the Shell worth your time? We'll find out. But before that, as always, I sat down and collected my thoughts before the viewing. So, without further ado, take it away. I remember me and uh, Pete used to watch Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z like at 6 a.m. on our local Fox station. And that was like very, that was, as cliche as that sounds, that was actually my first exposure to anime. There was four films that were like, not marketed towards kids, and they really weren't for kids. And those films were Akira, Ninja Scroll, Ghost in the Shell, and one, like I said, I said four. And one can make an argument, which I will, um, that Perfect Blue belongs in that list. Akira was really, really out there and way ahead of his time, as was Ghost in the Shell. The other two, um, Ninja Scroll is basically a classic samurai film, aka ninja film. Kind of like, you know, Lone Wolf and Cub and uh, Seven Samurai. And Perfect Blue was just a film that was basically like uh, a Hitchcock film. It had a really, really good twist. Uh, the Wachowski Brothers famously, this is on the internet, so it has to be true. The Wachowski Brothers famously got a copy of Ghost in the Shell, took it to Warren Bros. office, and basically laid it on the table saying, we want to do this, but live action. That would eventually become The Matrix, which, as you know, is regarded as one of the best sci-fi films of all time, and rightfully so. I don't even understand the whole whitewashing thing when it comes to the Ghost in the Shell casting for this film. Um, it's a huge risk. A lot of people aren't familiar with it, so of course you're going to use a well-known actress in Scarlett Johansson to market the film. Actually, no, this, this works too. This actually works too. So let me just, right there. Check it out. Nice! Did you seriously just say nice to? Oh my goodness. Oh, I'm not a weeb. I just want to throw that out there. I am not a weeb. For real, I'm, I'm not a weeb. First and foremost, let's get this, let's get this out of the way. Oh, uh, the whole whitewashing controversy is pretty much irrelevant in this film. Look at the cast on IMBD. Two actors have like, you know, American names. Everyone else is pretty much like, um, foreign. So, I don't know why they're all talking about whitewashing. I mean, I guess they're whitewashing the main character. But like I said in my previous thoughts, I mean, you need a marketable actress to make a film like, well, to market a film like this. You just can't cast that girl from Pacific Rim the Asian one, in all these other Asian-centric films, because then you'd be the racist Hollywood, and they don't want to be racist. Well, they, I, I guess they are, but you know, it's just stupid. Scarlett Johansson, once again, knocks it out of the park. There's nothing that woman can't do. Another great performance by her. The guy that plays Bato, though, pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, Bato is basically, um, I don't want to say her sidekick, but basically, like, the second most, um, I guess the second most important character in the series, and um, the guy nails it, classic Bato. Everyone else, great too. So I was mostly just interested in Togusa and the Sheep. I was like, as long as they're Asian, I'm cool with it. And guess what? They were Asian, so I, I was just, I was, I was giddy. Everyone else, I don't know their actors' names, but you know they did a good job, except for the villains. But I'll get to that. Before I go any further, let me just explain the plot without getting any spoilers, of course. This film fate. 
uh, Senator Zero Scarjo has character uh, Motoko Kusanagi. Um, she was in a horrible accident. She wakes up and they basically put her mind inside a shell without her consent. Now what a shell is basically is just a cyborg body. She's trying to adapt to her new life as basically um, this cyborg essentially. But it's, she questions whether she's even human or not. I mean, yes, her brain's in a cyborg, but, you know, she can't taste, she can't eat, she doesn't really need sleep. So, you know, what's really human? Nowadays, people are on their phones or on their computer. They use technology for everything. Hell, I'm using technology to make this film right now. Well, basically, what the film, the main story is, like, well, the, the focal point, if you will, um, technology is making us less human. And basically, that's what this film pretty much is. So, yes, she struggles to try to understand, like, what her new purpose in life is. Now, for the most part, yes, it is pretty faithful to the original film. Uh, the one thing, they kind of take liberty, if you will. Uh, they kind of explore Motoko Kusanaki's previous life, trying to, in which she's trying to discover who she was prior to this, which I actually think is great because it gives more emphasis on her struggle to identify what, what, what or who she really is. She may seem like a very strong woman at the beginning of the film, but then she starts questioning who she can trust, is her, are her memories fake, you know, is this, like, is her life real, is this simulation? Actually, that sounds a lot like The Matrix. But now, it being faithful doesn't mean it's good by any means necessary. The original film kind of dragged, and this film, while better at explaining things and has a better place, you know, it still drags um, for a good chunk of the film. The antagonists were pretty bland, actually, in the film. Um... One of them is the whole mysterious, shrouded in mystery type with a weird voice. And it's just sort of cliche at this point when, you know, there's an antagonist like that who's trying to expose a real antagonist. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The antagonist isn't the real antagonist. He's not trying to expose the real antagonist in a giant, stupid, evil pyramid scheme. And that's why it's kind of stupid. I mean, like, um... When you see... If you see the film, you kind of will see what I mean, how it's kind of stupid that this is a villain. Basically it's one of those like typical villains that's hiding in plain sight kind of deal. Which is, you know, again, cliche. Very Hollywood, very typical. The visuals in this film are nothing special. You've probably seen better visuals in the typical summer blockbuster. But like I said, it's a property that a lot of people aren't very familiar with. So, you know, they gotta cut the budget somewhere. And you know that very gorgeous aerial shot you see in the trailer with the whole city looking all like trippy and like advertised friendly with a stupid dog. Well, I hate to break it to you. They use that shot several times without the film. Like, the very same shot, except they do it in different angles. They kind of, like, you know, mask it. But I still see a stupid dog, so I'm pretty sure it's just the same scene. You can't fool me. It's the same dog. It doesn't age. It's digital. Digital dogs don't age. For the most part, Ghost in the Show is a very faithful adaptation. Sci-fi fans will love it. Typical movie girls will hate it. With all that said and done, I want to give Ghost in the Shell a... Six out of ten. I really wanted to give this film a seven. I really did because like I walked out of this film thinking it was a seven. But you know, the more I thought about it, the more there's I found more things that I can like hate on. As I said, sci-fi fans will love it. Typical moviegoers will probably not care for it, and roughly so. You're very people are unfamiliar with it, so I can't hate on that. But who knows if this film is a success? We are bound to see a ton more of these um, anime, live action anime films from Hollywood. As I speak right now, New Line Cinema is making um, a Naruto live action movie. So you better believe it, it's gonna suck ass. They're also trying to get Akira off the ground finally. Last I heard, they're trying to get Jordan Peele to direct it. Uh, hot off his success from Get Out. He probably won't do it. He's a smart man, he won't do it. He is a smart man, he won't do it. Straight up though, this film is better than Giant Ball Evolution. And you know, at this point, um, I will take anything I can get. So, I enjoyed the film. If you guys see it, I hope you all enjoy it too. If not, tell me, screw you. More live action films from Hollywood are coming. So, it could only get better from here, right guys? I mean, how could it get any worse than this, really?